All right, take it away. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Bruce Westfall. Uh, this is Scott Mooring. Uh, we're partners, and uh, we own Outside Edge, and our, we're here today to talk about our product, uh, the hardtop. So a lot of folks have heard about it in the last, since 2017, right? 2017? 2017. Okay, here we are. 2017. Uh, we started with Space Shuttle, and we're now up to 37 titles. Uh, we developed this product for a very specific reason. Um, we're collectors, we're pinball people, uh, we're also printers. So we combined our talents there and our interests and came up with the hardtop product, mainly because people were parting out games. There were, we had games, we see games everywhere we go. The auctions, like a lot of folks have been to, we see the ratted out play fields just like you see in this photograph. And uh, it, there has to be a better way than the, than the decal overlays. Uh, being a printer myself, familiar with the decal. They're not dimensionally stable. Um, there's a little problem with decals called plasticizer migration that will, yeah, that uh, will basically uh, not allow that decal to be, you know, for the long term, so to speak. So we, uh, if it was easy, everyone would do it. yes. So we embarked, uh, what I printed on uh, was plastic, glass, wood, um, paper, anything that lays flat that doesn't move too fast, we can print on it, is, is what I used to say. And um, so we, we gained a lot of knowledge over the years. Uh, between Scott and I, we have something like 60 or 70 years of printing experience. So uh, we started putting together materials, contacting uh, manufacturers, reps, uh, talking to coatings companies, and we needed to come with, up with something that would endure that, that polished ball uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And uh, the original scope of the product, actually, was to be a floating product that wouldn't damage the play field, that would lay down. That, there's a lot of reasons why we can, I'm not going to, we only have 30 minutes, so we're not going to get into a lot of detail why that didn't work. Um, but the main r problem is we could only go so thick. So we wound up with a 30,000th PETG. That's, this, that's the main substrate on the top of a hard top. Just as a little context, that's a credit card. Yeah. So that's about the thickness you're dealing with. Yeah. And uh, what we needed to do that next is come up with a coating. And uh, I had worked with coatings in the past for different uh, products uh, in and out of the pinball world uh, the, for abrasion resistance. And uh, we came up with the hardest coating we could, and I had some material coated. We sent it to Europe. We had some Tabor testing done, and we compared it to modern play fields. And what we found out was our hard coat is much harder than the play fields that are being produced, which is a good thing. So we went ahead with that, and we started developing next. The next layer down from our O30 clear polycarbonate was our uh, rebuilt licensed artwork. We've had a relationship. I've been reproducing pinball work for uh, almost 20 years now for a lot of different folks. And uh, so we already had those relationships that we could tie together with this. And uh, we basically got Bally Williams. Um, we have the rights to a lot of the, the Gottliebs as well uh, with permission, uh, title by title. And we s decided we were going to start with Space Shuttle. Why? because I traded a bunch of work uh, with Rob Burke, and he had some really old, junky space shuttles. It's like, perfect. That's where we're going to start. We know there's a lot of bad ones out there. So the next thing we had to do after the, the licensed artwork was uh, the adhesive. Um, I'm a, I was, a, at the time, a very large 3M customer, and I had, uh, I had the salespeople come out. They didn't have enough knowledge, and they brought out their engineers started talking to them about how we're going to adhere to a dissimilar product, being wood. And, uh, and they came up with a couple different formulations that we tried, and we settled. Actually, there's been three renditions of the adhesive now to, to where we have settled down now. Um, sort of the angle behind that adhesive is to create a suspension because when you heat and cool, they're gonna, the wood and the, and the polycarbonate are going to expand at different rates. So we're trying to create a, somewhat of a suspension where... It'll go back and forth a little bit without popping up, which we're going to get to later in this presentation. So one of the, one of the attributes that we wound up with, which was a happy accident, uh, was between the hard coating and the, and the polycarbonate, is we could bridge cupped inserts, which is a huge problem. It was a nice added bonus to, to putting a hard top on an old play field. And there you go. You can see it installed. And... 
that works great. But in the meantime, we created an issue, which is, is that the next slide? Yeah, uh, it, right after we had our fifth or sixth title out, of course, we read Pinside and all the other things that uh, that get posted throughout the Internet. And, you know, some of the detractors of our product would say, well, why would we ruin a play field by putting a hardtop on? Well, we designed the hardtop from the ground up to be installed on ruined play fields. That's what it's for. And, you know, we were finding some folks that were, uh, finding some survivor, what I would call a survivor play field that could be touched up and re-clear coated. We, we've, we've all seen those and some of us have done that. It's not really what our product's for. If you want to choose to put a hard top on something like that, it's, it's your individual choice. But that's not what our product was designed for. That is what our product was designed for. Stop parting out that game because that play field looks that way. Let, let's put a durable product on it and make it playable again and put it back into circulation, and that game still exists. And that's that's what's the most rewarding for the hardtop and, and developing this product is we're, we're, we're keeping these games alive, and they exist. And so we're providing... Oh. So then we're, we, uh, it gives us options. So, for example, if there's no reproduction available, um, this is Jokers, um, and it's also for the like versus love titles. You know, the ones where you're... You know, I don't want to do a full play field on it. Just I'll, I'll, I'll I'll answer answer please, please. Evil Knievel. Evil Knievel. We all know CPR makes an Evil Knievel play field. I like my Evil Knievel. I don't love my Evil Knievel. I, I, it's actually in pretty decent shape, except the play field is getting kind of bad. I, I would put a hard top. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to put a hard top on that. That's, for me, my personal choice. That's a title that I wouldn't put at the end, by the time you buy the posts and all the ancillary parts, because, you know, you want everything to look nice, $1,500. Everybody's got that title probably somewhere in their collection. It's like, well, I, I like it. I don't love it. And, that, uh, again, that there's another area a hardtop works. Yeah, so we have less money, less time than a full swap, and it actually is more durable than, it, than the existing overlay options that are out there. Um, and so that's basically what a hardtop is for. So now we get into the second part here, which is what isn't a hard top. So we've formatted this based on a lot of questions that we get. So will this ruin my play field, Bruce? Well, hopefully we're using a play field that is ruined uh, in the first place. But if you, if you choose to use a survivor and put a hard top over it because you, you physically want it perfect, and a hard top obviously will look perfect like a modern play field when you install it. Um, most likely, yes, it's going to damage it. There's like a 99.9% .9 chance if you pull that thing off, it's going to further degradate what's under it. Absolutely. The adhesive, either you, the adhesive you want to stick or you want it to be easily removed. It's one or the other. It can't be both. So, yes, it probably will heavily damage your play field when you remove it. All right. Well, uh, how well will this fit, you know, my, my machine? Yeah, we, uh, because of my experience, uh, last year well, I was with Shea Assad up here. We were talking about, and even before that, oh we yeah. did a we did a seminar called How to Make Perfect Parts for Imperfect Pinball Machines. With uh, Greg Ferris up here with us. That's there right, you. that's right. Variations, uh, different vendors. I'm a vendor. I'm a vendor to several manufacturers down there on that floor. I know I'm only one of the people making those parts for that game. That exact part is also being made by a I guess a competitor of mine. Um, so do they care if this machine matches this machine when it leaves? More so now is better because a lot of there's been a lot of digital aspects to the manufacturing process. But space shuttle days, uh, you know, high speed, no, no, not at all. And they really didn't care. So there are variations. I know of three to four variations of space shuttle alone. Uh, both in color and location of GI lights. Um, obviously, the hot dog versus non-hot dog inserts, a lot of you might be familiar with that. Um, and there's more. There's plenty more. But Black Knight, I know for a fact, they, they were moving the holes around, around the slingshots because some people call me and say, mine doesn't fit. Well, I have two files. I, I try to accommodate folks and let them send that one back and send them out another one. But could you imagine the versions of files and how badly we could screw that up if we had... 20 versions of uh, everything, trying to move holes around for every individual customer. We can't do that. 
So we, we try to do our best to generalize the holes where they go. Um, trim to fit is definitely a part of your existence if you buy a hard top. But um, I don't know. It's a piece of plastic. Is it going to play differently? Yeah, this is this is one I'm going <laughs> to. We're going to have to show some testing sooner or later. I was with, um, I think his name might be Zach. I can't remember the fellow from. Uh, uh, professor. Yeah, Professor from uh, Cincinnati. University of Cincinnati Engineering. My son goes there. My son's a student of his, and he was coming to the show. He's not here this year. He's offered to do this testing for us at the University of Cincinnati, and I think the invitation is still open, although I need to continue to push on him to, to do it. You're playing on polymer, whether you like it or not. If you go down and play a brand-new Venom, or any, you're not playing on wood. You're playing on plastic. This is plastic also. So... I'm, am I telling you a, a hard top plays differently than a play field? I don't know the answer to that. But I do know some of it's placebo, some of it's reality. And uh, what I want to use is data to prove it to everyone and show the test. We're going to have videos, we hope. And we're going to say, okay, a uh, space shuttle that's perfect, maybe a new CPR play field right beside a hard top. We want to show backspin. We want to show coefficient of friction. We want to show... We have high-speed cameras. We, uh, Zach and I have talked about it. I think we're going to have some really good data for people. And there's, there's I, th I think we're going to find there's this much difference, this much. But I think a lot of folks claim there's this much difference. And I don't believe it because if you play a uh, average space shuttle, there are striations, there are some blanking, there's there's uh, inserts that aren't perfect. And if you play that and play that and then jump on a hard-topped game. Of course it's going to play differently. Does it play differently than a space shuttle back in 1985, I think, when it came out? Uh, I don't know. That's debatable. That's what I want to hopefully get to the bottom of. But these folks online that say, well, a wood play field's way, way different than a hardtop, um, they don't realize who the moment you're not playing on plastic is when you're damaging your play field. <laughs> That's all, it's all a polymer. All righty, so uh, I've taken all the time to put this on. How long is it going to last? We don't know yet. Uh, like my space shuttle that I did, uh, the final version of my space shuttle that I owned, I took around to these shows. Some of you may have even seen it in our booth. Uh, I think it was 22,000, 23,000 plays on it when I got rid of it. It still looked new. Received an email out of the blue from the guy who bought it in central Ohio where we're at. Still plays great. I, and, and, and I don't know as though he told me how many plays he's had on it, but he's had it for two two years now, and I think I put that hard tap on in 2017. Yeah, yeah, and it, it doesn't. We don't use any wax. There's no special treatment. No. You just use a dry cloth and microcloth and wipe off the dust. Yeah. All right. So, uh, hey, why did my hard top lift up? What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> So this is something that we're dealing with. This is a, this is a limitation. We, we're not claiming our product's perfect. It's far from perfect. It's, it's the best solution we've been able to come up with. And I've, I'm not a lot of things, but when, when it comes to printing on s plastic substrates, I consider myself to be a professional. And I've, I talk to a lot of folks that uh, are, are engineers at 3M, at PowerAm, and all the, some of the biggest plastics companies in the world. And the hard top is the best we've come up with so far. Here's what's happening. If you've ever, has anyone in this room had a hard top that has lifted up anywhere? No? Okay. About once a month, I'll get somebody, and probably the worst one in my life since we started this product was this summer. He was fuming mad. He was a, uh, he's a restorer in California. Does everybody hear how hot it was in California this year, Southern California? He installed his hard top in, air con in an air conditioned space. Brand new, specifically fire. Uh, the, and there's a lot of inserts, you know, with the little buildings, and there's not a lot of area for adhesive. We cannot put adhesive right now over the inserts. It's going to make them cloudy. You're all going to be very unhappy with how it looks. It's not going to be the look you're after, and it's not going to look authentic. So we're working on that. But basically when you have, I, I think, uh, even uh, 8 Ball Deluxe, there's a couple others with just large areas of just many, many inserts. Well, that reduces our ability to, p to put adhesive between all those inserts well on our CNC machine. And uh, there's just plenty holding it down under normal circumstances. But part of the problem is, well, 90% of the problem is this. See that little space under your cupped insert? Even if that insert was flat, go back to that picture, yeah. 
even if that was flat, there's a small cavity because there, uh, our ink has a thickness, our adhesive has a thickness until you get to the bottom side of our polycarbonate. There's a tiny amount of air. It's sealed in there, completely sealed. Cupped inserts creates much more air. So what's air do when you heat it up? It expands. If it's got nowhere to go, it's going to push up your hardtop. This is exactly what's happening 90% of the time. Uh, pin Brew in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. I had a, a good customer of mine. He's actually from my area. He threw his uh, uh, Silver Ball Mania in the back of his truck, and it was about a three-hour ride up, and it was sunny, 80 degrees out. He got there, and he had a balloon in the center of his uh, play field. Most of the time, we're able to bring it inside, cool it down, wait till it's cool, and gently push it back down, and he's still playing that game today. But that is a bad deal if you, if you let a large temperature changes happen to a hard-topped game. It's a limitation of the product. It's not perfect. Um, what I want to do is eliminate that space, and I want to fill that space perfectly, and perfectly is the problem um, because you're all going to manually install this on there, okay, and I've got to fill that hole perfectly without anything happening as far as overlaps and causing little bumps and things like that. Um, uh, a good thing to do is replace your inserts if you if you can. But not everybody can, not everybody wants to, but that reduces the amount of space. But here is the failure point of a hard top, right here. And we recommend installing LEDs um, because that just eliminates a lot of the heat. It's locally. right. A vent hole? I I haven't thought of a decent way uh, to tell someone you should drill a hole uh, <laughs> to so our product doesn't fail. Uh, it <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Right. The right. very, oh, sorry. Go. All right, so we'll reduce the heat and, and probably move on off of this. If you, all right. The, the, the other failure point is, uh, that I know of is, and everyone asks me, do I, do I really need to clear coat this? And everyone see, I want to clarify why we want that to happen. A play field, 30, 40, 45 years old, 25 years old, whatever the game is, uh, when you sand it down, like you've, we've all watched on video, if you're interested in a hard top, and sand the art off, there's no way for us to know that you have sanded far enough safely and met, kept your play field flat to where you've gotten down far enough into the fibers of the wood to get all the wax. God knows what products they have pushed down into that thing for the last 30 years. And then we're going to put our commercial solvent-based adhesive over it. I, I, and if it lifts up later uh, and you didn't clear coat it, there probably was oils or, or, or waxes and stuff down in your wood. This, this thin coat of clear shines up your inserts, and it basically gives you a, a sealed piece of wood to lay this onto so where we know we're laying down on a pristine surface that our, our adhesive will adhere to. And it doesn't require a commercial automotive clear. It's just a shaker can. Yeah, so. I, I've used Krylon, and just let it gas out, obviously, and that I've had zero failure. Um, so... That's the only other failure point of lifting uh, that has happened since 2017. Hey, Bruce, uh, are you going to be making my favorite title? Because I just bought a new game, uh, and you really should make a new hardtop for my title. I wish I could answer everyone, but you c if, you ha if you buy a game and you, don't and you jump on our website, or you haven't jumped on our website, and you thought about emailing us to see if we would do this title, you are not the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth person this week to think of that. Because we get them all week, every week. And we just, we haven't, if some of you may have received them, an automated response because we just couldn't answer them all. As we want to make them all. Um, uh, licensing is an issue, uh, especially, you know, $6 million man. Anything that's a, a, a licensed title is a problem. Does anybody want to go after Gene Simmons and see if he'll let us do a kiss? Right. <laughs> Good luck. Right. And, uh, yeah. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? For home brewers. Home home brewing. So the custom one-offs. Yeah, th th that's tough for us too. That's a, uh, thank you for bringing that up. 
the issue is everybody has the file and the problem is I have a CNC machine here's that piece of equipment I have a printing piece of equipment right here and this piece of equipment is going to make the adhesive all of them have X and Y calibrations all of them the file you give me especially if it needs to be precise and it, you don't want it shifted off your inserts at all we can't just email files print it charge you two or three or four or five or six hundred dollars for all of our work and you get it's like I can see the edge of the insert. Well, it's going to be another $600, and I don't think you're going to be very happy. I shy away from them because typically by the time we're done and put enough effort into it, the, the cost that we have to charge is exceeds, exceeds your interests. So. All right, so a little wrap-up to see how well you do here. What is a hard top? A hard top is for saving unsavable play fields. I hope we made that that clear. Second, Keeping games from being parted out. Second, hard top is less than half the time, less than half the cost of a full swap. We're not down on full swaps. Go ahead. Please. I've done them. <laughs> yeah. I've got games that I, I didn't put a hard top on. I put a play field in it. This is to fill that gap between painting it, living with it, and doing a full swap, which you know might be 40 plus hours of your life. And the last one, a hard top is a faster way to restore games and make them play great again. That's really what we're trying to do. Half the cost, half the time, then a play field. And everybody has those games. It's like, you know what? I'd sure like that to look, you know, I want that in my game room, but I want it to look nice. I want it to play well. It's, it's 350 bucks versus 1100 And that's what, and it's durable, and it'll last for years. And we are going to probably do go a long way to, to, to helping this whole expansion issue. So uh, we've kind of reached our Q&A portion. So if anybody has any questions. Yeah, uh, what is the age restriction that you have to run Haggis? We don't know what Haggis is doing. Yeah, we don't know what Haggis is doing, but Tabor testing is a lab anti is an abrasion test. It's an ATSM uh, test. Uh, it compares uh, a, a how much there's a there's a Tabor wheel, and they. I don't remember all the details. I'd have to get that test out. But they, they run an abrasive wheel on it, and they measure how many RPMs and how much pressure it takes to create an abrasion on the surface. And uh, that's what we compared to a, a, a modern play field. Was it three times? I think you, I've heard you said something like that. I don't want to quote that because okay. I can't remember. Right. It, w it, was, <laughs> it was like twice as hard. We try to put most of those on our website. Like if you get on our website, you'll see uh, the two main space shuttles are listed. One's the non-hot dog, one's hot dog. You, uh, uh, was it Swords of Fury? Do you want it misspelled like they did at the factory, or do you want it corrected? Uh, because I'm saying, oh, no, no, it's, uh, I think it's, was it Shield? Yeah. Was spelled? Shield, we want it spelled wrong, just like it shipped. Oh, no, we want that corrected. We have them both, and they're listed. Taxi, Marilyn, and Lola. Yep. For the most part, to answer your question, they're on the site. <laughs> we've got we I've asked the question to Rick. I've got a good relationship with uh, uh, Rick Bartlett at Planetary. We talk every week, and some of that stuff I have found to be highly inaccurate as far as the notes. It's just he doesn't know where they came from. And he doesn't know what what phase of the game they that he has here. It could have they, they just might have needed thrown away, and they but he still has the notes. So I think that raises an interesting point, though, because our customers will come back to us and say, "Hey, there's a little hole here." that I have that you don't have. And then we're able to update. So it's it's always, the next version is always the best version. We're always making little As long as we can verify we that that was a common hole, like w we missed it, which is, it's like finding Waldo when we're building one of these things. So you'll stare at it. We just did Fireball 2. You're staring and staring and staring at it, and I cannot find another problem. And then I make the first one, I say, oh, that's wrong. And I'll throw it away, and i got to start over, because it's just a lot to look at. And we, we did hear a tip at the show, and I, I believe, Paul is doing this as well, using a, a soldering iron. So really, really, and just open up the hole just a little bit. We've never heard that until this weekend. That's, like, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. No kiss. <laughs> no kiss. I'll <laughs> let you call Gene Simmons, and you, if you can get permission, we'll make it. Oh, yeah. So another thing that people don't realize is none of these are our, mach are our machines. So we're dependent on 
finding good play field. Yeah, we, we will often post on Facebook or something like, all right, we want to look for these three titles. If, if you send us one and we use yours, you get a free hard top back and your, hard, and your play field back, obviously. But we want it stripped front and back because it's, we, it's just too cumbersome to ship and deal with getting the art off with everything with the, all the machinery on the back of it. Price point that we look at for, or how many units were made, or time period. Oh, I see. No, uh, not necessarily. Does uh, if we are asked a lot, like um, what were we? What have we been asked about three or four times this weekend? Oh, whirlwind. I think it's whirlwind, right? Uh, no, uh, earth earthshaker. Earthshaker, thank you. We already have whirlwind. Yeah. yeah. Uh, earthshaker. Uh, we're thinking we, we're going to do an earthshaker very very soon because we've been asked like four times this weekend. Uh, but we have to find an earthshaker that we can. If you find well, we, 50 we'd love people, you for that. yeah. <laughs> what we have found, though, uh, I, especially on Finn's side, w we we made the mistake of doing a survey, and all those people that said they were going to buy these didn't buy those. <laughs> it's highly unreliable. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank we you. Appreciate it.